Hey guys, it's Neon, and we're going to talk about the digital media implosion. I think I think we're going to have a lot of salty blue checks here pretty soon. Saltier, saltier blue checks as digital media continues to implode, continues to burn down. And I think the most affected niche is actually going to be pop culture blogs. I think we're going to see the death of a lot of pop culture blogs because I think they've been propped up by fake numbers for years and we're starting to see that these blogs that have acted as the authority uh, telling fans what to think uh, telling studios what kind of content to produce a lot of it's smoke and mirrors uh, and we're seeing that now as the money runs out we're seeing that they don't have the eyeballs the views that a lot of them are claiming to have and we're gonna see a lot of blue checks unemployed let me bust out the world's tiniest violin for that because a lot of these people let's be honest there are some good ones out there but a lot of them are pretty trash people and they spend all day on twitter trashing people and they're lording over people on social media that they are the journalists they're the tastemakers and it looks like they're probably a lot of them are going to be sol here pretty soon because it's not sustainable when you're not propped up by venture capital and uh, big ad buys by studios because they ran out of money, the whole pop culture blog thing is not sustainable. So we're going to talk about that uh, before we get into it. Speaking of blogs, it's not actually a blog, but if you go to clownfishtv.com, all of our videos, as they are posted, uh, they're also posted to this website and you can sign up for notifications. You can ring the little bell and uh, it will tell you if we posted a video on one of our channels. Now, I want to talk about this because this is where the shift is happening. Everybody's moving to independent content creators for news and opinions. And that's actually how things started, right? Back in the day, about 10, 15 years ago, a lot of these big websites now that have sort of become the enemy of geeks started out as like independent blogs and then they grew and grew and grew and they start bringing more people on board and then uh, Hollywood got involved and then the money started to change hands and the next thing you know uh, a lot of these sites have become shill sites they exist solely to prop up Hollywood studios uh, to you know tell fans they're awful if they don't like particular things they become the antithesis of what they were eventually. Even Comic Book Resources was started by Jonah Wyland back in the day, and he works for DC Comics now. Just lost his job from DC Comics, actually. But it wasn't always a shill site. So a lot of these sites started out with good intentions, and when Hollywood got involved and they brought the money, and venture capitalists got involved because they saw a market they could go after, they pumped up a lot of these sites artificially for years. So this is why it seems like a lot of them popped up in the last five or six years or took a really hard left turn in the last five or six years because they were they were uh, propped up by venture capital and now that they have to survive on their own it turns out shockingly enough that they're not sustainable and there's a bunch of layoffs a bunch of consolidations uh, i missed this last week geo media laid off 15 members of its video staff geo media bought what was left of gawker um one of their websites of course is io9 they have uh, io9, Kotaku, uh, Gizmodo, uh, you know, and they're laying people off. They're laying people off. And there, there was uh, uh, some, you know, controversy around them before because they wanted to start a union and it kind of went the way of Kickstarter, right? Where they start a union and certain people, I believe, got gone. But they're laying people off from video, which is interesting because everybody is trying to pivot to video. But these bloggers can't video. They can't. It's not going well. We're going to talk about that. But first, let's talk about Geo Media laying off 15 people coming from businessinsider.com. Geo Media laid off members of its video team, according to an internal memo reviewed by Business Insider. This is about a week ago. I missed it. Multiple sources said 15 staffers were let go from video, which is, again, this is very key. We'll talk about this. Geo editorial director Jim Rich said in an email to staff the decision came after two months of conversations with editorial heads and extensive examining of audience numbers in video content. Business Insider confirmed the layoffs with Geo Media. So let's look at some of what Geo Media owns in regards to pop culture. They own io9, and io9 isn't even its own website anymore. It has become a tab 
on the gizmodo.com website because it wasn't bringing enough traffic in to warrant it being its own thing. io9, which has been around for 12 years, has 51,000 subs, and some of their videos only get 64 views, 1.8 thousand views, 357 views on San Diego Comic-Con. Like, what the hell? Of course they've had conversations with some of their video people because any rando YouTuber could start a channel tomorrow, a pop culture channel tomorrow, not have the expense of something like io9 and pull more views in this. This is absolutely pathetic. The highs and lows of San Diego Comic-Con, 68 views on io9, part of uh, Geo Media, probably paying staffers God knows how much per year to produce video content that pulls 100 views, 300 views, whatever. Let's go out to Kotaku. Kotaku's probably doing better, right? You think Kotaku's doing better? Kotaku, big, massive video game news site. 382,000 subs for Kotaku, which, again, big site. Fall Guys, they did a, a gameplay video of Fall Guys a week ago. 6,000 views. A highlight reel of Ghost of Tsushima, 52,000 views. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be a dick. But pretty much any small YouTuber or medium-sized YouTuber can pull more views and not have the overhead that Kotaku and io9 and, and these other companies have. And we're going to talk about that because I think the companies, the parent companies, are starting to catch on. They're trying to pivot to video and they can't do it because when you go to YouTube, the proof is in the pudding. Pudding, I don't know. Special pudding. The, the proof is in the pudding. When you go to YouTube, you will see if you have a real audience or if it's all bullshit. And I think that these websites, now that they're being pushed over to YouTube, now that they have to go do video, it's turning out that it's a bunch of bullshit. That they've been propped up for years and these sites will probably shutter because of coronavirus. Well, not because of coronavirus in particular, but because of the lack of money the ad spends are not there banner advertising sales are way down and these journalists are going to be losing their jobs and remember these are the people a lot of them who have spent the last four or five six years on twitter telling fans that they were trash and getting paid to do it so part of me is like i don't like people losing their jobs but i'm also like i don't think the world is going to be a worse off place if a lot of these journos uh, lose their platform because they have been. Th you want to know why studios are making the kind of stuff they're making. You want to know why fans are being attacked constantly. I I'm going to be honest. I think you can blame a handful of websites, you know, for getting the ear of Hollywood because Hollywood got involved. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Hollywood got involved. So these websites, they're going to these websites for opinions like this is what fans actually want. And when they double, triple, quadruple down on stupid things like, you know, The Last Jedi was the best Star Wars movie ever. And anybody who hates it, they're just a bunch of alt-right Nazis. Hollywood buys it if they're not paying attention. Or people in Hollywood are actually putting these journos up to writing bullshit like that because they think if they put it out there enough that it will become truth if you repeat it enough times it becomes truth and you're starting to see especially with youtube that the proof is in the pudding if they're not bringing the views they really don't have that much of a following so they're laying people off in video and i think they're like you're not even paying for yourselves like yeah, you know, when you're pulling in six thousand views or a hundred views on some of these videos like you're not even paying for your salary so Jim Rich, the company's editorial director for Geo Media, told staff in an internal memo it would reduce the number of people working uh, for the head of video at Geo. Now, I don't know if they produce the content for all the channels, but none of their channels, Kotaku, I would expect to do really well, and it's not. Rich said in the emailed memo reviewed by Business Insider, the decision came after two months of conversations with the head of video and other editorial heads and extensive examining of audience numbers in video content. They're not pulling the numbers. I'm going to talk about some other sites, too, that can't make the pivot to video. Rich did not reveal the official number of people laid off in the memo, but multiple sources familiar with the matter said 15 people have been laid off so far. I'm sorry for the pain that this will cause you. This happened at Collider, too. Collider, which got way more views 
just gutted their video department because they're like, yeah, we're getting views, but we're not getting enough views, I guess, to bring in the ad revenue to make it worth paying you guys salaries. And a lot of these companies were propped up by venture capital. They didn't actually have to produce anything. Uh, they, they were basically paid in the hopes that in five years they would be sustainable and they're not. Um, Chris Person got laid off. Geo Media provided the following statement to Business Insider. In our efforts to strengthen editorial teams at Geo Media, we completed a thorough evaluation of our traffic and sites. In doing so, we're making the unfortunate but necessary decision to change our current process of video production. While an important part of the business, some resources currently dedicated to video would be better used across other areas of the company, including editorial, and are being re allocated accordingly as we evaluate the future of our video production structure some of our video staff will be affected effective today it is always difficult to make these decisions and we thank the affected employees for their time with us and wish them the best the best thing you can do if you're a pop culture uh person journalist or whatever is go start your own site go start your own youtube channel some of the people from collider did that and they've been somewhat successful but don't look for a job at some company chasing YouTube or chasing blogs, because I think, I think those days are over, you know, it, it's, it's so much easier. Like in our case, we're sustainable because it's just us. You know, we have a skeleton crew. It's just us, but you get these people and they go out there and they go all Hollywood and Hollywood gets involved. And we're going to talk about you know, what happens when Hollywood gets involved in pop culture and pop culture media. Hollywood gets involved and it becomes a big production. Uh, I'm going to talk about Nerdist. And we talked about this before, but Nerdist and Geek and Sundry were, I believe, two of the big catalysts in what I would call the pop culture wars. Because when they got involved, when they brought Hollywood production values and their Hollywood connections into pop culture journalism, pop culture media... It kind of set a precedent and it did blow up. I mean, I think you can trace all the, the bullshit going on in tabletop gaming and Dungeons and Dragons back to Geek and Sundry, back to Critical Role, because again, you brought Hollywood people into the game. Some of them maybe weren't gamers and it was just, it was all a show. Everything becomes a show and Hollywood's fake. And we're going to find out that these sites are fake too, as more and more of them shut down but legendary digital networks laying off 30 percent of staff at nerdist and at uh geek and sundry and some of their other brands and i'm going to show you why because they're not paying for themselves like i know what the ad rates are and i'm looking at these sites i'm like you're not paying for yourself nerdist has dropped in traffic the website has dropped in traffic because they're not they're not reliable they really aren't um, but, uh, Nerdist, you know, it's got 2 million subs, almost 3 million subs at Nerdist. Look at this a day ago, 25,000 views for Epic Games versus Apple. 18,000 views for flying cars here. Uh, Avatar, 31,000 views. We got like 80,000 views on our video and we only have like 130 some thousand subs. Doctor Who, 21,000, 29,000. Nobody's going to these channels anymore because they don't trust them. And the, the people that they have working for them, these journalists, they go out to Twitter and they act like assholes. And they, they basically are telling them this is a message for the you know people in charge of these websites. They are telling actual geeks not to come to your website, not to watch your YouTube channel. Don't watch them. Don't go there because you can't they can't be trusted. And they're assholes. You know, <laughs> they're assholes who can't be trusted. So people are dropping off. Geek and Sundry, 2.12 million subs. Look at this, newest videos, 6.4 thousand views, 25 thousand views, 11 thousand views, 76 thousand views six months ago. Now Critical Role is doing better, but I, I think it's, it's even declining in popularity and they spun that off um, from Geek and Sundry. They went out on their own. so. They're probably in a better place anyway, but I, I, I do trace a lot of the bullshit going on in pop culture right now back to Hollywood getting involved. As soon as Hollywood got involved and venture capitalists got involved and they made uh, being a geek big business, you know, and, and we're, you know, we saw it in gaming, we saw it in tabletop gaming, saw it in video games, saw it in comic books, and it's coming for anime right now. It's happening right now. And we warned you guys like two years ago, this is going to happen. 
And uh, I didn't even believe it. I wasn't sure if I, I believed it, but we're seeing it right now that they're coming for anime and manga too. And uh, But speaking of which, Anime News Network. Anime News Network, which has been online for freaking 20 years. Their YouTube channel, they've only got 9,000 subs, not even 9,000 subs. Their videos get, they're lucky if they break 1,000. Well, here they got 16,000 on the top top five 3D CG anime. Uh, you know, but this is Anime News Network. They've got this blog that should be pushing traffic to their video. So here's what's probably going on. And Geeky, I'll have to get her in on one of these. She's, she's out right now this morning. But she tracks a lot of these blogs. She tracks their numbers. She tracks their their social stats. We used to do it when we did the Disney blog and she's got literal notebooks full of, of website stats and stuff. And she sees these spikes and whatever. And you can see when they start corn feeding the websites traffic to build it up. Why do they do that? So they can charge more to the advertisers. They start corn feeding the websites, which you can do a lot easier than YouTube. And they start, you know, convincing the advertisers that, oh my God, we get millions of views a month. Well, they might get millions of views a month, but how many of them are actually legitimate? You know, how many people are actually talking about these websites anymore? Uh, Bleeding Cool. Again, been around a long time. 2,000 subs. 2.46 thousand. Now, they've had a couple of big videos like five or six years ago, but you look at their newer videos, they haven't posted anything in almost a year. 99 views. 470 views. Um, You know, 98 views. Like... This is Blink Cool. Why, why are we listening to these websites? How is it the Anime News Network and Bleeding Cool and Nerdist and io9 have all this supposed influence over pop culture when the proof is in the pudding? They're not pulling the views on YouTube. Comics Beat. Been around for freaking 15, 20 years and multiple iterations. 600 subscribers. And they promote it on their website. 11 views. 11 views, 18 views, 37 views. Why the fuck are we listening to these people? The Mary Sue, 2,000 subs, 2.69 thousand subs. In how many years? This video is from six years ago. What the hell? 1,000 views a year ago. Not even 1,000 views. They tried their own. Look at this. Like, look. They've got a studio. I wish I had a studio. I'm sitting here out of the corner of my house with trucks going by. You don't hear it because I edit the trucks out of the out of the podcast. Sometimes. Sometimes I can't take them out. We work out of the corner of our houses. A lot of YouTubers, we do. We work at home. There goes a truck right now. I can't edit the damn thing out because I don't have a fancy studio. But somebody, somebody is paying the Mary Sue ridiculous money not only probably to pay their staffers but look at this posh studio with little screens and shit all this shit that they got 2,000 views why are you paying money for this kotaku again same kind of a thing they're only getting you know a couple thousand views here and there these sites aren't worth anything and they're gonna get absorbed and they're gonna get shut down because i think the pop culture journalism thing i think it's all a, a sham why do people go to YouTube? Because they can hear other geeks bitch about stuff. You know? And I think a lot of these sites started with good intentions. I think comic book resources started with good intentions. But as soon as you sell it off and it's not yours anymore, these companies can come in and and uh, you know do whatever they want to do. Bring in their uh, Instagram models or whatever the hell they want to do. Um, their fake geek girls and, and run with it. And that's what's happened. io9 is just a tab on Gizmodo now. It, it doesn't even really exist anymore. Uh, same with Newsarama. Newsarama just last month, I think it was last month, it got absorbed into games radar. It's not even important enough to have its own URL anymore. It's just a, a freaking tab on another website because the traffic's not there. The traffic is not there. And these people cannot make the jump to to youtube they're they're horrible at it and we're starting to see this now and these these people that run these companies now the venture capitals run out they're starting to see it too because i was shocked i was like why is geo of all the things to to lay people off in video is probably the most important thing right now uh when it comes to you know uh, journalism pop culture journalism why would you lay off your video staff oh because they're not bringing the numbers and what's going to happen is if they're not bringing the numbers 
on the website, then they're not going to be bringing the numbers on YouTube. And, and, and uh, we're going to see all this whole thing collapse. I really do because the money is running out. You know, look what happened to look what happened to, uh, you know, Vox. Vox is laying a bunch of people off. Um, Vice Disney lost a ton of money on Vice. Mike, which was a big uh, a big website like five years ago, only sold for about five million dollars. We saw Tumblr sell for three million dollars. Like an individual YouTuber could cut a check. I mean, you'd have to be a pretty successful YouTuber, but seriously, like PewDiePie could could have cut a check and bought Tumblr. There are houses in California that, I mean, we're talking middle-class houses that cost more than Tumblr or Mike even, you know? I, I mean, this is insane. Got my parents' house out there. It was a pretty modest house. It was like two and a half million dollar house. Could have sold their house and put a, bought Tumblr. All of Tumblr. So it's all collapsing. It's all collapsing because it was never real. It was never real. It was all fake. Fake geeks on fake geek websites propped up with venture capital, monopoly money. And now that uh, coronavirus is is coming and taking away the ad revenue, they can't sustain these websites anymore. They can't sustain the channels. It's up. The show's over. Why is everybody moving to YouTube? Why are these journalists so hell-bent on shutting down YouTubers? Because individual YouTubers can make sites like Kotaku look bad, can make sites like Nerdist look bad. You know, almost 3 million subs and this is all you can do with your fancy sets and your how many people you have on staff to edit videos that don't perform. You know, the day of reckoning is coming, guys. The blue checks, a lot of them are going to be out of a job pretty damn soon. Again, I wish I could feel a little more empathy, but I've seen how a lot of these people behave online and I've seen the arrogance that has the undeserved arrogance that has come with their positions. And uh, it's going to end soon. It's all going to come crashing down. So uh, I would strongly suggest you pick up another job skill like coding. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.